afternoon guys I want to talk to you about a little bit of a touchy issue and subject because we all have some which is different various levels and I didn't think mine was that bad honestly I really didn't but it was I had drifted off it's one of my messages look at it and read it or watch it about Leviticus 29, church, get rid of the altar. But that's, you know, it's become a, that was become a stage. So I was very adamant about the pride that had gotten in there and the, just the uncleanliness and unholiness and just all the stuff. But mine came in a different form, but it was still pride. And I didn't think it was there. So, I'll be kind of brief, but it's not Hebrews. Those, those scriptures I got, guys, were this morning in prayer. I wrote them down. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. Hebrews 2, 1 through 4. And what was the other one? 2 Peter 2. One through four. Guys, I'll just tell you where I'm at so you'll know I don't make this stuff up. Okay? Until I was, you know, in my in 19, you know, my drug of choice was LSD, guys, okay? And so I kind of fried my brain a little bit. I, mean, I did tons of it, honestly. I'm not a badge of honor, it's a badge of dishonor, but it, you know, but I did. And then fast forward it to today, three years ago, I had had one or more than one, some mini brain strokes and the diagnosis was moderate severe brain loss. <clears throat> My balance was one of them. I couldn't even walk. It part, they, they showed me, pick, I did three MRIs guys and one was almost an hour long, some kind of deep MRI, they said. And they said parts of my brain had died. I'm like, what do you mean died? You know, what do I do? And that, there's nothing you can do, it's gone. I'm like, okay, God, I guess I don't need that part. Well, that's three years ago. Well, fast forward it to today, and, I, and there's a reason why I'm telling you this, so you'll know I don't just, this is not just me in the flesh. I've lived in the North Dallas area, of suburbs of North Dallas, same ones for about over 30 years. <clears throat> and, uh, I was at an intersection, and I'd been there a hundred times, if not a thousand. Real common to me. And the light turned, and I was lost. I didn't know which way to go. Elvis has kind of left the building. I know I've had some more. I got some doctors, things coming up, but because of the storm that I'd been in, and I was self-inflicted because of the pride. Honestly. Some was God chastising me because I wasn't listening, being disobedient. Some was the enemy used all that to, man, to kick my butt. So right now, you know, right now I'm in the, the pruning stages and the chastisement and it hurts, but it's good. I'm thankful and grateful that he did. He loves me enough to stop me in my tracks. I was in his perfect will. But I was doing it my, so don't take this wrong. I was in his perfect will because I knew what he wanted me to do, what he told me to do. And I was doing it, but I was doing it my way. So I was more in the way. Self and pride. And where I'm going with this is, guys, it's real easy in the ministry, especially. Um, I got a friend now, and he's a good guy. Him and his wife. And, uh, now they're preaching on a stage that's 20 feet in the air and 40 feet long and lights everywhere. It looks like a football stadium, kind of. It's like, man, guys. So, but mine was what he told me to do. And I was doing it. I'll give you the details of another message, but right now, no. But it was a helps ministry in some ways, a lot of ways. And because it was a ministry, I kind of, you know, hid behind that. Didn't see it that way. Wasn't even really thinking, thought, 
man, this is great stuff, you know. And the awesomeness of it is, guys, when God really gives you some deep revelation, he wants to do it for all of us. Maybe in different, not necessarily forms, because, you know, some people get it through the Word, some get it in prayer, some get it in just things that happen to them and life circumstances that God shows them things. Some of them are a little, not necessarily different, but yet they're unique. Let's see it that. And, um, that's really awesome, guys. I've got some really, really cool testimonies and some landmarks. Um, short one. Fourth of July. I'm in the hospital with two infected toes. I'm diabetic. That's how I got these brain strokes, too, by the way. And, uh, <clears throat> doctor's diagnosed when he walks in. Man, they, they badgered me really, really hard to get to the hospital. They were you had to go to the emergency room. You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. You'd be yelling at me. Even, and it was like pretty brutal. And then the infection was pretty brutal. And a bunch of the, sur the surgeon I picked that I trusted came in and he said, man, we're going to have to cut off all five. I looked at him and I said, wow. And uh, he told me, he said, well, there's another alternative. And it was, you know, home IV. It was approved by the insurance even and everything. And that was the plan. And then I kind of got booted out by one of the doctors that changed everything. One of those, one of those doctors that was in charge. But I felt like a side of beef, guys. Long story, 10 weeks later, brutal IV treatment, by the way. Five for an hour. 12 for an hour and nine for an hour every day, 10 weeks. On and I bought it's a pretty good sized bottle and man, it tore me up, guys. But the last diagnosis, see in three months, I don't lose any of my toes. One looks pretty ugly because the infection went on too long, but um, they're still there. So. I've got some landmarks. That's just one that's kind of minor, honestly. It, it was major, but it's kind of minor. But I've got a bunch of them, not just healings, but just things that he's done. Directions he's given me, things he said, and that it came to pass. And just in my life, mostly, really. So, but this pride thing it got to me. Because when he... It's like this this morning in prayer, I get these scriptures. Guys, how awesome is that? But I got to lose the pride. Because he wants to speak to all of us the same, you know? I'm no different. I got to stand before him. I got to kneel before Jesus. I got to stand before the king one day and account for every word I say. I can't let sin in my life. I've got to clean up just like you do. When I, when I take a bath, I don't like baths, I take it out. But if I take a bath, there's a dirty ring around there. Well, it's because I made of dirt. Okay? So we all are. I don't care what color you are, age or race or man or woman or child. It's dirt. So, but, you know, we can go to the opposite extreme and, you know, a lot of the Catholic Church taught that, honestly, because I was raised that way, but I'm not picking on them in particular, but that false humility. Right. And that's what I was doing, guys. I didn't think it was in me. That's say 1980. After preaching for almost 16 years, I became a prodigal son. My wife's like, you weren't mad at God. I was shaking my fist at God. You are not a good God. All this happened in my life. And most of it was me. Honestly. I'll spare you the details. But it wasn't good. I got the grace piece. And he finally brought me back. That's in one of my messages. But my testimony is real grace. But this pride thing, guys, has got to go. And I didn't think I had it. And so I'm not picking on anybody, but I'm saying you better start searching because it's time to weep and pray between the altar and the porch. 
Because, guys, I'll give you a song. I like the song for two reasons, but I just like the song, I'm Proud to Be an American, or at least I know I'm free. You can't hardly say that nowadays, but I like that song because it says, from the lakes of Minnesota, that's where I was born and raised for 18 years, to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, within Texas 30 some years, over 30 years. So I just like that song, but you know, we have become this prideful land and nation. Now it's all about the politics of your Republican or Democrat and all this other, you know, man, it's a bunch of hogwash, honestly, guys. It really is. It's okay to, you know, kind of, sort of, but not really. It's just pride, arrogance and pride. got to lose it guys if we want to gain our life we've got to lose it and it's really hard and we all can do that so I'm that you know this is not you and I'm different I'm not different it's pretty awesome what God's doing in this day and hour the message I put out about they poke the bear but really it's the line of the tribe of Judah Everybody was, you know, uh, man, they, they pinned the tail on the, on, uh, and the, you know, the Trump thing. It's like the Trump train. It's like, man, guys, he's a, he's a man just like us. I'm going to say this and people aren't going to like it, but, you know, I want, I voted for him because the stance on abortion. I'm going somewhere with this. But I told people, I said, I'm not necessarily a big Trump fan. I did not like the way that he talked to Marco Rubio and to Jeb Bush and even to Hillary, even though I didn't vote for her. Didn't really like her because I didn't like her stance, to be honest. And the things she stood for. But there's a reason why he didn't win, guys, and it's not just because of the, uh, the, the way that they handled the election. <laughs> Probably was some fraud in there, minor fraud, different places. It, it probably happens every election, honestly. Maybe even a little bit more towards, you know, because just people get opinionated. But the real one was the decept deception by the media, the social media, the, just the, the, the cutting off at the knees, said anything. But the reason why he didn't win is because of his attitude it hadn't changed. Still got one. Prideful attitude. Well, he wins in 2024. Even if we get there, who knows? We may not. Have to, this place, we may not exist by then, guys. Honestly, I don't know. You know, the way things are turning, you know, it could be totally upside down by then. That is right now, kind of. But where I was going with this, with the abortion issue, especially, we've been a nation that's been under a curse taking babies like so bunches of other nations that do it, but we've been under a curse and we think we're under a, a blessing. We've been under a curse. Because we've been taking so many innocent lives. And just looking the other way, oh it's law, it's a law of the land, da, da. But the worst administration as far as those kind of rights, gay rights and all the other garbage that they're doing, the sin that they're promoting. Look what God's doing under it. It's not under Trump's administration. And people are even trying to go back and say, if it gets bypassed, it's going to be, thank you, Trump. No, it's not. It's thank you, Jesus. But what I'm saying is, I drive along. I'm in Dallas, so the big city. Everywhere you go is a retail shopping center on every corner. I was at a corner the other day and a convenience store on every corner or a gas station place to eat, restaurants, just retail, you know, it's like how many shopping centers do you need in one block? But the main thing I'm seeing too, that same drives, church after church after church after 
church on every corner of every denominational flavor. I'm just like Baskin Robbins, you know, 47, 47 different gods. 47,000, you know. So, this is a really good saying from an old preacher that I sat under. And he said, if you can't run with the footman, how are you going to run with the horseman? So, we can't even pray out a very ungodly law of abortion. How are we going to pray out the mark of the beast? Guys, this pride has got to go. But don't go the opposite extreme and get this false humility either. Because that's just, you know, hiding in plain sight. That's just lying to yourself too. What I'm saying is the same thing I've said in most, almost all my messages. Get it straight. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Word. Pray about it. And really pray about it. That's why I said weep between the porch and the altar. And let's do it at 5 in the morning. That's another one of my messages. I love you guys. Um, it's just time to lose the pride. Hard to do. I get it. I didn't think it was there in me. Oh, I was so wrong. It hurts right now. Pretty brutal, bloody even, honestly. But you know what? I thank God that he loves me enough to chastise me. And at the same time, he has grace. I'm under so much grace right now, guys. It's not even funny. Thank you, Jesus. I'm doing things that medically and humanly are impossible. 60-year-old guy in a 100-year-old body. Honestly, and it's like, okay, Lord, I'll do that. Okay. And he's, he's given me grace. I'll explain you the details, but it's just more than sufficient grace. It's just, thank you, Jesus. And I'm like, man, you give me so much grace. And I really screwed up. Honestly, with this pride, I was trying to help some people one one couple I was trying to help, I ended up hurting more than I helped, way more. I was like, man, that was not my heart's intention. But yet it became that because of the sin of pride. And I didn't see it. And so, you know, I went through all that, angry at God a little bit even. It's like, man, God, why didn't you show me this before when I had a chance to fix it, take care of it, the resources to do it, time being one of them. Wasn't just money, but it was time too. And the strength and the physical capabilities and a lot of different things that I just, that I'm talking about. And he told me, he said, because I didn't want you to think that you did it. I want to do it. Man, that hurts a little bit. That's how much pride was in there. That's how deep it was. So we love you guys. Let's all do this together. Just get rid of the pride. And turn to him. That's what he's talking about in Second Chronicles 7, 14, 2, 7, 14. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves. And pray. That's what I'm telling you. Do pray. Humble yourselves. Get rid of the pride. Not the false humility. Not the, you know, I'm a piece of dog dirt. Dog poop dirt, whatever. Yes, we are. We're sinners lost and undone until he reaches down and molds us and shapes us and does his touch of the master's hand to turn us the direction he wants us to go and turn us into his vessels of honor, not dishonor. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.